Yo, yo, welcome back to the Audio Theory Podcast. If you're new to the channel, please hit the subscribe button as well as the like button and check the description box for today's topics. What's good, Danny? How have you been? I've been good, dude. Just fresh back from Palm Springs. Funny, I just left California. You just got back. Mm -hmm. um, we'll get into complete Coachella breakdown shortly. But um, yeah, I'm just going to say this. The traveling part of this trip, which could have been very tight and hectic, ended uh -huh. up being the easiest thing in the world, bro. So for everybody knows I live in South Florida. Coachella was Friday, starting at 12. Uh -huh. I took a flight Friday morning, leaving Florida at 6 a.m., landed in California at 9 a.m., had a drive for two hours with the rented a car. And bro, everything was smooth. We got to the hotel, room was ready, was able to shower, get to coach the yeah, bro. Like everything was smooth. And then dude, flights were so crazy like when we first booked this that we didn't even book a flight back we only booked a return and then when we woke up um on monday morning we were able to get a good flight leaving at three o'clock that still got us home at a decent hour on monday so like oh wow everything that needed to work out worked out yo beautifully bro nice. and that's not even from you know it being a fire festival which we'll get into wait like so you before you went to coachella you only had bought in the the go-to flight like a yep, one-way we only had a one-way flight that's it. oh because because re returning the prices were crazy or what crazy like, just, Dude, okay. crazy like uh, a round trip ticket from fort lauderdale to lax was like 650 damn and then a round trip ticket because obviously everyone was flying in and leaving from palm springs for the most part yeah was like 750 shit so that's like, damn, that's like, you might as well go to Europe for that price. That's what I'm saying, dude. So yeah, yeah. we bought a, a very affordable one-way ticket each. And then um, because of my girl's connects, we got a free flight back. So dude, it worked out. Nice. Fucking clutch, dog. But yeah, yeah. it could have been bad, bro. It could have been like, we missed majority of the first day because of flight delay. And uh -huh. then we don't get back home at all until like Tuesday or Wednesday because we thought like, yeah, we'll just take the three o'clock right. flight. Let's see what happens. Yeah, so that, like, I would have been, been so been paranoid bad. about that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, but luckily it worked out. I think we were just such a, uh, such a high um, from the festival. Like, you know, whatever nice. happens, happens. But it was dope, bro. But yeah, we'll get into it shortly. Uh, how about you, bro? How was the trip to Cancun? How was your travels? The Seeing the family? Like, how was all that, dude? Uh, seeing family was definitely the highlight. Um, I was looking forward to that. I really hadn't seen anyone since my own wedding. Mm -hmm. um, I will say the unfortunate thing was I, I had thought we would be in the city center for Cancun, but it turns out the venue or resort, I should say, was like an hour from the city. It was in a okay. smaller town called Puerto uh, Morelos, I think. Um, okay, but you still flew into Cancun, so you just assumed yeah, you were there. Right, so flew into Cancun. Um, turns out the city is like an hour away, like a hundred bucks round trip. So we ended up not uh, going to, to town, but I was kind of looking forward to doing that mainly because the resort itself didn't really have like entertainment and the entertainment they did have was like kind of lame. Like, yo, um, Courtney, they do like the whole, they put on a show for you, right? And mm -hmm. you're like, bro, I don't want a show. Like, where's the club? Like, where's right. the drink? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, they did have a club, but it, it to your point, like the, there was no consistency with the music. One second, it's uh, Bad Bunny. And the next, it's like Britney Spears. Like, mm -hmm. oops, I did it again. And I'm like, all right, who's clearly nobody's DJing this shit. It's just like, how do we please like every Everybody. demographic yeah, yeah. and and not have to like pay somebody to stand there for six hours? So okay, so be so usually when that happens, and be honest, I'll tell you from my experience, that happened to me too. Was the food also mediocre? Oh sh shit! If that was that was by far the worst aspect of it, and I I'm a pretty low maintenance person and i know that these resorts and stuff generally don't have the best of foods but like when i say it was pretty bad like i woke up in the morning like with no appetite i'm like just give me a margarita like i'm gonna skip lunch skip yo lunches. like that's that how happened bad it happened to me my girl so her friend got married last year in june in cancun and bro like the entire weekend it was bad but specifically at the wedding bro all we ate was mashed potatoes we're like, bro, like, I don't think this meat is cooked. Like, right. there's yeah. no way. Like, dude, we knew it was bad that the only thing we chose to eat for every meal was chicken nuggets. And yeah. dude, we're paying five-star prices. Right. And you're telling me the best thing here is chicken nuggets? Like, that's a mm. fucking problem. Right. Yeah, I went to the, the buffet the next day. And mind you, like, when we first arrived, my brother's, like, complaining about the food. And I'm like, 
can't be that bad because he's sounded dramatic. He's like, damn, I didn't I didn't even want to eat today and all this. So I'm just like, <laughs> I'm like, bro, there's got to be like a generic taco or something that's good, but nothing. Like I had a cheeseburger and that was shit. So I ended up just Dude, but think about that, bro. You had why would you ever want to be in Mexico and ask for a cheeseburger? Exactly. But that those that was like the surprisingly the Mexican food wasn't edible. I'm like, how is this a thing? So I had to just get drunk as fuck and then get the, mun- <laughs> the drunchies and be like, yo, like this is all decent. But yeah, damn, bro. Yeah. But how was the ceremony and all that part? The ceremony was cool. Um, again, it was nice to just like get drunk with the entire family in yeah, one yeah. spot. It was a pretty small wedding, so it kept it more intimate. Nice. Uh, met a few cool people, and um, I think the music was still a struggle. Like during the actual ceremony, or I don't know if you considered the ceremony, the reception, whatever. I always get okay. confused. But the dancing portion, um, they they were off to a rocky start, and then the the bride was like, "Yo, like." You got to help do something because they were playing some some like Usher, yeah, and like typical shit that like nobody really wants to hear. Yeah. Um, as much as those songs can be bangers for certain people, like that shit's kind of old. So I got some some good uh more modern stuff on the the playlist. But nice. So you really, you literally took over the ox for a couple like I couldn't sessions. take it over. The funny thing is they had like four DJs standing behind the booth, and I would just. Every other song, I would run up to them with my phone to be like, yo, like, play this. And and sure enough, like, people were rocking out to it, but they were playing um, that slide to the left, uh, electric slide or whatever it's called. Like, shit like that. Like, that's cool maybe for a couple songs, but, like, nobody wants to hear that. Yeah, bro. And that's why, like, it's it's so funny, though, but, like, the setting matters, bro, because, like, that's that song or those kind of songs, think about your wedding, would be highly like not inappropriate but just wouldn't fit right right but like, it just yeah. doesn't fit like in what world bro? <laughs> like, exactly yeah and we didn't have like uh much of an older crowd at this wedding so that that made it more confusing like i would get it i get it when there's uh a wedding with you know elderly people who may not know how to dance and like want something more or remember friendly. that song yeah, yeah, yeah like a bunch of little kids and stuff but there was, I think most people were like probably in their early 40s, late 30s. Um, oh, wow. They were, yeah, they right. were trying to hear like Kanye and like other stuff like that. Gotcha. Like when gotcha. I, I got them to play um, Niggas in Paris and like everyone went crazy. Lost their mind? Nice. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> that was like nice. right after that. Uh, this is your first cousin, right? Like your, your mom's nephew? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. My mom's nephew. That's awesome, dude. All right, man. Well, shout out to them. Uh, and did you end up having to work Monday from there? Like when did you get back? No, I got back Monday, midday. Um, I had already kind of taken it off and okay. just basically uh, took it easy um, yesterday. Nice. Solid, dude. Solid, solid, solid. Yeah, dude, for me, um, we didn't get home till like 1230. It's weird, bro, because like for a three-day trip, you don't think you have jet lag, but because we had to adjust and make sure we were on, on schedule with like Coachella, like, mm-hmm. bro, like really... I couldn't fall asleep till like three in the morning because I was like, bro, like I was at a festival until this time and now I'm going yeah. to sleep. Like it doesn't make any sense. Right. So like, yeah, like I, I still managed to like wake up, go to the gym and go to work. So nice. um, yeah, yeah, I'm going to pass the fuck out after this, but definitely uh, happy to do this. Definitely a lot of talk about in music at the festival. Um, but before we get into that, I uh, do want to tell everyone that this episode is brought to us by our friends at Fear. FEAR stands for false evidence appearing real. They take over 20 years of experience with uh, treating fear and anxiety and put into an affordable and easily digestible electronic learning course. Their unique approach is designed to fast track you to overcome your fears while saving you thousands of dollars an hour with a psychologist. Check out the link below to get started and be sure to use the promo code AUDIO-THEORY. That's AUDIO-THEORY at checkout to get an exclusive discount. Shout out to our good friends at FEAR for uh, supporting the pod. Shout out to FEAR. Let's get into it, bro. But uh, all right, man. So Coachella recap. I wanted to throw a couple of names at you and just like let you know like what I thought and like just like the overall like what that means for like the state of music. Because a couple of things like really fucking stood out to me, which was like, Huh. Okay. Nice. You know what I mean? So one, I was shocked by this, bro. And like even more so my girl, because if anyone knows Gina, like she it's either hip hop or like maybe pop, but like nothing else. Like she doesn't fuck with any other kind of music. Mm-hmm. So dude, we were at 
um, we were about to have dinner, we were vibing, and then this DJ by the name of Black Coffee started playing. Have you heard of him before? No. All right, dude. So world-renowned house DJ travels the world. Like, dude, like, whatever the top five DJs, like, he's top three. Like, just, like, that well-known, right? Wow. So he happened to be on the Sahara stage, um, which we, you and I saw most of the shows at. That's the one that's, like, you can literally see, like, where the dust keeps, like, coming in and out because, like, it's open on both sides. That's why they call it Sahara. Is that um, where, like, Blackpink and YG and all yep. that were at? Okay. Yep. Yeah, right. that, that's exactly. So, like, when you're looking at them, you can still, like, see the mountains, but, like, yeah, the yeah. wind and dust is, like, dude, it's fucking insane. Like, dude, dude to, not to be graphic, like, bro, but my boogers were so black, dude, because, like, the <laughs> dust is just... Why? It's just filling up. Bro. Yep. Yeah, yeah, bro. Wild. But, again, so, black coffee, bro. So, I was in my head, like, yo, we're going to eat, chill, and then we're going to go see Little Baby at 825. Dude, black coffee start at 815. And, yo, we were like, we're not leaving this, dude. Like, yo, just phenomenal. And it just made me think, like, yo, what a phenomenal setup and festival where even hip-hop fans are, like, transcended into, like, you know what? Let me just try something else right now. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And I felt back to, like, our trip when we, like, saw Blackpink. Like, yo, we can see someone else that we know. Or we Mm -hmm. can just try something different. Because at the end of the day, like, I don't know, man. Maybe because I saw Cordae, like, right before... And I'm like, I know we're gonna see like two more hip hop acts like tonight itself on Friday. I'm like, what is Little Baby really gonna do for me? Right. That's gonna make me like, oh my god. You know what right. I mean? Like, yep. Yeah, and like even our experiences at Rolling Loud, I feel like after a few performances, you're like, it kind of feels like the same thing, mm-hmm. unless it's like the headliner. And I know like when we went to Coachella, we got like a nice blend of different genres i think reggaeton at one point yep. like pop push a t then yg gangster rap and then like jaden smith like i feel like that that mix is needed to enjoy that like, eight needed, hours dude. of music yeah yeah and then dude visually there's something about night performances there bro because like they go so over top with the visuals on like the screens behind them uh-huh. and dude i feel bad for artists who have to do a day set Cause like, bro, there's just something about the energy that changes at night. I don't know if everyone's like still drugged out from the day before or like they're tired or what, bro. But like during the day, like the energy level from all dude, artists and fans just isn't there. Yeah. And then this goes to my next point that was going to be dude, Vince Staples. Like, bro, I was pumped for that set, bro. Like we got there exactly like 10 minutes before so I can get my lemonade fucking fill it up with my fucking tequila and just enjoy this motherfucker. Just for the song Lemonade too, or? No, bro, we were drinking lemonade every day. That's, dude, I had that drink in my hand every moment, bro. Like, <laughs> you know the flask that you told me to buy? Like the one that you yeah. bought? Bro, yeah, we yeah. walked in that bitch for at least four every day. Like, nice. you know, it was, security oh. was horrendous. Like, they didn't give a fuck. They were like, just don't <laughs> kill each other. Right. Um, but bro, he had a five o'clock set. Obviously, California, five o'clock is still fucking bright as fuck. Bro, no energy. Like, yo, like, like even Gina recorded like the the crowd when Lemonade came on. Yo, Lemonade's a fun fucking song, right, bro? Everyone was just looking at it. But what's weird is that like everyone stayed. So like, uh-huh. he, like, like it was a massive drawing to see him. Like, one, it's in California, so you know they're gonna support. But bro, like, just the energy levels, and it was like it sucked because I was so excited to watch him after the album drop. Mm-hmm. But it just dude, like, it, like if I would have paid for that performance overall. I would have been like super disappointed. I'm like, damn, this is yeah. like average, bro. And right. I don't, and again, I don't really blame him. I just think I, like, there was nothing to feed off for him. And then because like you, the visuals don't look crazy because it's so so bright out, it's right. like whose fault is this? You know? Yeah, yeah. I think what it is with these festivals, like people, like whatever drugs or alcohol people bring in, they're not. It doesn't really set in until. A few yeah. hours, like yeah. seven, eight o'clock. So I feel like when people show up, they're kind of just like, "Oh, I'm here, and I, I might as well watch this." But they're not like in the mood to be jumping around and yeah, no, dude, minimal dancing from people. Yeah, like minimal, bro. Like, mm-hmm. like shit really didn't pick up till like yeah, again, like eight o'clock when that first night show hit. Besides that, dude, anything before eight was like, eh. yeah, and it was just crazy because there were some big names before eight o'clock, bro, and it was just right. like. They, they weren't getting any fucking crowd work at all. I yeah. mean, they were just like, bro, I got paid for this. I'm going to show up. Uh, I'm going to make this look good on the gram, like, with the editing. But, fam, like, 
if Vince Staples like went on IG Live and told people, you know, he just killed it, like lying to you, bro, because it was bad. And again, I don't even blame him. I just don't think there's yeah. anything for him to feed off. Right. You mean like media wise, like a buzz or like. No, I, I, I don't think there's anything the... for, for to feed off as far as like the energy from the crowd. Got it. Yeah. Yeah. It's all I can imagine it'd be tough if you're performing for a crowd that's not you know, for 45 vibing minutes, with you. And it's just yeah. like. Because then eventually you're just going to be like, yo, why am I trying yeah. this hard to like please them if they're just going to sit there? Dude, at, at one point though, I think he legit, because when he had like three songs set, three songs left, was like he saw people leave because you know people just leave for like the next like right, right. if their favorite artist is about to perform whatever. Yeah. But he's like, where are y'all going? <laughs> I was like, you said that. Yeah, yeah. Ooh. Yeah, that's <laughs> that, tough. That's tough, bro. That's tough because it wasn't a mass exodus, but it was like a good amount of people just dipping. Yeah, yeah. Did did it sound like he was? Uh kind of being funny like joking around or did you sound like serious like uh, he kinda. was kind of joking around i think uh, he knows i think he mentioned that's like his third coach hello so i think he just knows how this shit works but yeah yeah I, I realized bro if you have an early set you can't be on a stage that's like that like i think if you think think about like when we saw push a t like, yeah i was just about to say yeah those like sets like bro like it has to be dark like mm -hmm. it just doesn't hit like people aren't ready to lose their mind when it's fucking so bright outside and like you said right. like the alcohol hasn't kicked in yet the, you're so tired from the night before it's like yeah but i get and i know coachella wants to get as many names in as possible so i get it right. but you have to be super creative as an artist because otherwise you're just gonna have like a, a super average set right and i think people are kind of like just more self-conscious when it's bright out like i feel like that's the reason why clubs and everything tend to just be dark because like who wants to dance with bright lights on and Yo, I just feel like point. the setting's not that comfortable. Like, but when it's dim and like you just see bright lights in the ceiling and everything, there's something about it that makes you like want to let loose. I guess yeah, a bit more. That's a dude, That's a fucking great. I didn't even think about that. That's a great point. Dude. That's yeah. a that's a really good point. Yeah, yeah. So I maybe I had to do with that. Um, but yeah. So that was one thing. But just so a, a couple more things I want to get to that really, and I get to the, the the main one at the end. So the Megan the Stallion set. So two hysterical things Ooh. happened during that set, bro. So one, so Gina thought, my girlfriend thought she was a uh, Megan Thee Stallion fan, right? Because she heard a couple songs and was like, yo, I yaddy, we have yaddy, to go yaddy, see yaddy, her. Yaddy. Yeah, and I was like, oh yeah, dude, you want to go see Megan? Like, I'll take notes. Like, this is this is it, this is me, like, preparing for the pod. Uh -huh. Dude, three songs in, she looks at me and is like, oh, all her songs are, like, about, like, dicks and, like, yeah. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there's no exaggeration. Like, I'm pretty sure... Like, and I, I've, I've always wanted to, like, be objective with this kind of topic around, you know, fe female artists and rappers. And every time there's, like, a promotion or, like, an ad on YouTube, literally, like, the first three lyrics, like, she's sucking somebody's dick or, like, is bragging about fucking dicks. And I'm just like, where is the other thing or interest that you have in life besides just that? Yep. So, dude, like, when we were, like, six, seven songs, like, deep, no pun intended, like, she just was like, yo, we can leave. Like, this is, I, I didn't realize that it was just, the, just, and she took, so I guess, like, I, I don't know if this is all girls, but I guess, like, girls who are, like, passive hip-hop listeners, like, they yeah. just know the famous songs and, like, never really took a deep dive to an album. Mm -hmm. So she's like, how is her whole catalog, like, just this? Like, it doesn't make sense. Yeah. Um, but I, what I will say, dude, so I, I knew that going in because we just know enough for her. Dude, but I did realize in that moment, because she was doing the Coachella stage before the closing act. So There's like a 930 set. They do the, the, the turnout for her was wild. So I, in that like moment- Like in a good I, way? In a good way. Like, yo, there's okay. a lot of people there, bro. Like Got singing it. the songs and knowing every lyric. I did realize in that moment, wow, she really is so much bigger than Tory Lanez. Like, cause remove the shooting from the situation. Like in Tory Lanez's best day, he's not getting the second to last set on a Saturday night at Coachella. No. Nah. Like that's not fucking happening. No. So like, it was wild to like really like see that. Cause I was like, oh wow. Like, yeah, this is annoying and I don't give a fuck about these songs, but whatever level she's at she is at a very high level that they even gave her this platform to fucking perform these songs right no Tori's definitely not transcended to the like suburban market whereas no. every white girl knows who megan the stallion is every hood chick knows who she is 
and she works with like I'm pretty doesn't she have a song with like Dua Lipa and all kinds of people yeah. like uh uh that she had dude, a song Maroon Adam 5 Levine. I think yeah Maroon 5 like so she's everywhere they're pushing her hard into like every market so I'm not that surprised uh, her turnout was was big yeah massive dude but um yeah that was just I was like damn like this dude like regardless of whatever drama is happening right now watch her get into some more later but like yeah I, I like Tori's best day maybe he's the third closing act at Rolling Loud which doesn't say anything like mm-hmm. okay like whatever like it's a hip-hop festival they have to put someone there right so right like even I think when we went to see him at 2018 like he wasn't one of the headliners like no. he was just another guy there right and I saw him at uh, the Chris Brown concert I went to a few years ago. And I mean, he, he was definitely good, but I didn't feel that energy of like, oh, everybody's like rush, rushing to the to their, their seat or whatever to go check him out. I mean, he did yeah. a great job, but I don't think he has uh, that big of a fan base to at least no, comparable dude. to Megan. No, no, no. Which again, which is pretty... It, it does say whatever his current fan base right now is is fucking loyal because you would think some like the statures of them like she would just like could destroy him and clearly yeah. like you know two years almost after this whole shooting debacle like he's still like famous and making money and like people actually are supporting him so that's yeah, yeah. that was that's pretty crazy considering just how big dude she's dude that that turnout was wild bro like wild for her okay that's, that, um, that's interesting you brought it up and i know we'll get into it later but i i want to bring that point back because uh i had some points about this whole interview and everything the interview there. with gail king yeah yeah perfect perfect yep. uh all right so second last take from the festival dude doja cat set phenomenal bro she has so many hits like bro it literally was an hour of just non-stop bang like i was like jesus dude. nice yeah no she's she's a star and i actually she's a star. She's a she star. has she's one of the and not to sound misogynistic but like in terms of female artists like i actually would give a shit if somebody's like she dropped a uh let's say she dropped an album this thursday like i would go out of my way to check it out and yeah. see what she's got on it 100% dude uh, She brought out Tyga For a couple of songs That was cool um, But bro Oh for Juicy uh, or whatever Yeah 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 And maybe something else Or maybe he did like His own version of a song Or and re- like a freestyle or something But he uh-huh. was definitely out there For like a good like Five six minutes um, But yeah dude She had a 55 minute set She was the second um, Closing act On Sunday um, Yeah she went on Like an hour and a half Before the weekend And bro She just killed it Killed it. Nice. Like flawless performance, looked amazing, crowd engagement, which can be hard at a festival because there's just so many people there who may or may not even be like you're like you're you might be performing for someone sitting literally like a mile away, but they can still see you on the screen. So you have to try to engage with them, you know? Like yeah, yeah. that shit all seems set up for like not a great show. And dude, she fucking destroyed it, bro. So like nice. Shout out to her. Um, but dude, the the headline of everything was Friday night, second to last set of the night. Baby Keen just, bro, killed it. Like, when I tell you crowd control, bro, like, I didn't even realize, like, under the right setting, like, his songs could even hit like that. Uh-huh. Because, like, you right. know, like certain, like, certain songs, like, yo, this is an anthem, this is, like, a arena song. You know what I mean? Like, but, like, if you go back to his album, like, you don't think he has, yo, bro, he made every song into that, like a fucking anthem. And like, this again is the power of the fucking lighting. Bro, the lighting with the crowd in a dark space, bro, just like, dude, before even Kendrick came out, I remember holding Gina and be like, wow, bro, this is different, bro. Mm-hmm. And obviously it's California, they were giving him love regardless. And I think everyone kind of had an inkling like Kendrick coming out would be like maybe a thing. But bro, yeah. Kendrick only came out for five minutes, bro. Like that 50 minute set before was bro flawless, dude. Wow. Like, yeah, dude. So I would highly recommend anyone, if you have a chance to see Baby Keem live, like in your city or state, fam, go do that shit. Cause bro, that shit was super impressive. Um, but the way he brought out Kendrick was phenomenal, bro. So I, I think they have like maybe two or three famous songs together, right? So dude, he left um what was the biggest one? Uh, the one he won the Oscar for Family Ties till the yeah. end. But he had two other songs that he played throughout the set and like would pause for the Kendrick part uh-huh. and like tease like 
and then would start rapping it as uh-huh. no, like yo, never mind. Ah, so just, yeah, yeah. yeah, yo, bro. <laughs> like I remember holding my girl like, oh damn, it's not gonna happen. It's not yeah, gonna yeah. happen. Yeah, but bro, like when he finally came out, dude, everyone lost their fucking minds. Like, yo, like I was like, wow, this shit's really fucking happening. And the fact that we joked about it less than four days prior to that is phenomenal. Like if I would have known he was gonna have a late set. Then I would have had more confidence in it. I just didn't know what time he was going to be on. Right. But, bro, phenomenal. Like, that that itself was the highlight of the entire the weekend. Like, wow. Dude, by That's far, like, bro, amazing. because of that, I chose to leave right afterwards. I'm like, yo, love Big Sean. Like, yo, we know we're the number one Big Sean supporting podcast in the world. But I was like, fam, there is nothing he's going to do to make me want to, like, oh, this is better. So let me just go home and, like, wrap this day up. And then... I didn't care about seeing Harry Styles, like the closing act on Friday. And then, dude, Doja Cat, Denzel Curry, and Vince Staples were so good on Sunday that I didn't even stay for the weekend. I was like, oh, wow. like I am, you know, I am satisfied. I am content. Let's go home. So nice. Overall, phenomenal trip, bro. Great experience. And I do, I think like, and not to put ourselves on blast, but I think like the drug policy out there is way more lax than it was three years ago. Cause like, bro, people were smoking like in the middle of the ground and like, you know, I feel like when we used to take a hit, like we were like, you know, hiding it or just like, like it was wild how like everyone is just like, security's like, bro, we're not, unless you're doing like straight up like cocaine on the fucking ground, like we don't care. And that was, that was pretty nice. Like, yeah, that's interesting. Especially like with the whole Travis situation, you would think like, or at least when that first happened, I thought, these venues were going to get just strict in general, even though it's not like any of what happened was due to like people bringing in weed or anything like that. But it's interesting that it seems like the more and more I go to these concerts and stuff, like security is just like, you don't have a machine gun. All right, cool. Like, yeah, pretty much, dude. Like, yeah. yeah, like, dude, security was so lax. Like, they only really like stopped you if you had a book bag. Like, if you had, like, a fanny pack, like, I never carried a bag, but I always had, like, everything in my pockets. Dude, I never yeah. got stopped. Um, but what's funny, dude, like, I, I was thinking about Travis, too, because a couple times, like, Baby Keem, Vince Staples, uh, who else? Corday. Corday had a decent show, by the way. Nothing crazy, nice. but decent. Like, I don't know if it's laziness, bro, but they were like, open it up. I want to see a mosh. And everyone was like, no. We're not. <laughs> We're not doing that. Wait, they actually <laughs> said those words? Like the artists? Yeah. Yeah, dude. Open it up. I, yo, get to your left side. Get to, I uh-huh. wanna see a I wanna see a mosh in the middle. And dude, there was no mosh pitting. Like yeah. no one. Damn, that's any bold desire. of them to be saying that shit. Yeah, dude. But I think it's like, dude, no like no offense to them, but I think it was moments in the set where maybe it got a little bit dry. Mm-hmm. And they were like, all right, what can I do to really amp this shit yeah, up? Yeah, and they're just like saying stereotypical stuff to get stereotypical, people like up. yo let me try to be a rock star for a second yeah, yeah. shit um yeah. but yeah that was funny how like bro like it was the the safest fucking environment like even for like the most intense crowd like on top of each other was the baby keem set um and bro at that even for that at no point did i feel like unsafe right like, it was just everyone losing their mind but like controlled chaos like got it everyone you like bro there's still two more sets tonight there's still two more days of this like, I'm not going to risk getting kicked out, let alone fucking killing someone because of, like, whoever's on stage. So, right, right. That was pretty cool. Nice. Did, did, um, Baby Kim play Hooligan? Do you know? Oh, bro, I can't. If he did, I can't remember. I know he, dude, he did the, the majority of his album, though. I will okay. say that. Cause all this shit, like, again, I only started listening to him off this album. Right, right. And I would say he played a good seven songs off the album. Okay, so maybe he didn't. There's one of his, uh, I don't even know if it was on an album, but it was a song that one of the few, or the, it is the song that made me a fan of him, and I'm pretty okay. sure it was released like two years ago, maybe. Okay. So he might have just not played it, but who knows? Okay, yo, I would say for me, the best moment was, dude, he played the song that him, Travis, and Kanye have on the Donda album. Mm-hmm. And bro, the setup with the lights to that was, bro phenomenal like nice. yo like i'm like yo, is he fucking bringing kanye out because this is gonna go yeah. like that. i thought it was gonna go crazy but um yeah dude it was it was a, you know, again he was by far the star of the weekend um which is again I, I i went home happy friday night but i was also like fuck dude if that's the highlight 
I got yeah, two yeah, days like, left. Like, have to, yeah, yeah, what am I gonna do? Look forward to. But luckily, like we had um, other shit. Like it was, it was, dude. It was a nine out of ten trip. Um, nice. Yeah, like it, it. It was just like I. I would have just preferred like if the headliners were more enticing to me. Because again, like I, you should be going there for the headliner. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah, right. I should be wanting to stay for whoever's headlining. And I was just like, bro, like I, I don't care. Right. Yeah, and I. Yeah, I mean, granted, I had the the wedding, but when I saw the lineup originally. I think Kanye was like the only one that really mm-hmm. caught my eye. And then after he announced he wasn't going, I was like in my head, well, if I was still going, cause I knew you were going, I'm like, who would I gravitate towards? But not like you mentioned all these people that I didn't realize uh, were gonna be there. And I think it goes to show that there is, it sounds like there's still new acts that you can yeah, come dude. across that can make it fun, like black coffee. So I'll de- I'm definitely gonna seriously consider next year, depending on Dude, um, but I will tell you this: I'm done. I'm I'm done. I'm never going back. Like it literally has to be like, it has to be like Jay Z or like Kanye and Jay Z. Like it has uh, to be literally one specific person. That's like I don't know if you want to trust Kanye anymore at this point. Right, exactly. But something wild, because dude, like I'm not saying that I'm getting old, but bro, standing for seven hours for three days straight, yo, <laughs> pain, bro. Yeah. Like literally leaning over mid sets, like yo, we gotta leave soon. Like, bro, like yeah. this is, yo, painful, bro. So, right. like, I lit for one set. Um, Gina and I were literally like in the parent section. Where, like the parents are just like you know standing back and like you know making sure their kids are alive. Uh-huh. We were with the parents because like yo, I didn't even know there was a parent section. It's not a parent with. section, but, but like everyone in that section is like literally like in their fifties and sixties. They don't care what's happening. They're just there to make sure there's parental control at some Got level. Yeah, um, yeah. But they're there because like there was a, a back area where you can have back support. So they're leaning against the wall. I was like, oh, Got that's it. genius. I need that right now. I was like, bro, because <laughs> it was bad, bro. It was bad. And it was cold as shit in the evening. So like, yo, like my bones are like, fam, you are not 26 anymore. So yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, I'm definitely done for at least a good four or five years, bro, because that shit took a lot out of me, bro. Like, I'm not yeah. gonna lie. No, I bet. No, I think, yeah, for me, like, the lineup would have to be crazy. Like, after Rolling Loud, like, that alone was super exhausting. Um, Coachella, I feel like, is a more laid-back environment in general. But yeah. with the exception of, I mean, granted, I ended up going with you that one time because uh, your friend had an extra ticket or whatever, uh, or was giving up his ticket. But up until then, I had never really wanted to go to Coachella because in my head, I was like, well, there's like a hundred artists or whatever, but mm-hmm. I only really want to see like three. So why would I spend X amount? Um, but I think right, so I would say, okay, like, so. but if I lived in LA or the Bay, I think it's similar to like when I lived in New York, like when there's a constant, like Governor's Island, right? Like in New York, yeah, yeah. I think when there's a constant thing relatively close to you, I think there's like a subconscious of like, bro, I can go whenever I want. So unless yeah, yeah. it's like enticing, like why even bother? So I get where yeah, you're yeah. coming from. For me, like it was always a bucket list. I'm like, bro, right. like, I'm going to go to California. I'm going to take this. Like, this is like our modern day Woodstock, right? So I was right, like, right. I got to do this. And then it was also Gina's bucket list. Like, Yo, let me knock this shit out back to back years, you know, right before COVID, right after. Uh, but I will say, we're getting into this in, in the heat of the week. What I do love about Coachella that I, I mean, I guess you can get at Rolling Loud too, but I do love that you could be walking around the, the festival grounds and then be like sucked in by a random act that really is brilliant music. And like that happened two or three times over the course of three days, which is great. I'm like, bro, like, yeah. where else am I going to find a house set or a you know, R&B, hip hop dude from like United Arab Emirates, like all these different things. I was like, oh, this is special, bro. Yeah. Um, so that, that was a that was a cool feeling, bro. Then some like, I don't know, if, there's, a, there's a stage called the Gobi stage. Um, and that's the stage that we saw Virgil perform. Mm-hmm. Like it was like the tent, like a tent? that had yeah, like yeah. chandeliers. Like, bro, that's a beautiful fucking venue. But also when you have like grimy fucking music playing in that beautiful venue, like there's something like beautiful about that. So like uh-huh. I saw like um oh bro another great set remember that British rapper I put you on earlier last year called Slow Tide yeah 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 
Dude, we saw, like, right, I dude? saw him at that venue, that same Virgil venue. Uh-huh. And like, bro, him doing British rap and doing crazy faces, but it being a beautiful velvet, literally velvet tent with chandeliers. Like that was a very unique experience. Right. Whereas like, yeah, I could see him live when he came to visit Miami, but it's not going to be that, you right. know? So like that kind yeah. of shit is the beauty, I think, about Coachella. You can really just stumble upon amazing acts and have no idea for the first 20 minutes who the fuck you're even like showing right. up for. Yeah, no, that's fire. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, I'm done, bro. Like, my body was like, <laughs> bro, get the fuck out of here with this shit. Yeah, yeah, no, I bet. Plus, it's so, like, fresh, like, like even w- with uh, my trip to Mexico, I'm like, I'm done with traveling. Yeah. I'm sure, like, <laughs> a month from now, I'm probably going to get some, like, a travel bug again and be like, yo, what's my next trip or something. Yeah, dude, and, then, and I'm sure, like, in six months, they're going to announce that it's, like, an all-hip-hop headline at Coachella. Future, Young Thug, Travis yeah. Guy, like, well, I guess we're going back yeah. next year, bro. <laughs> right. Exactly. It is what it is. It is what it is. <laughs> um, that's the Coachella recap. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Uh, but, yeah, I think the biggest highlight, I would say, is Baby Keem. So if you have a chance, go go uh, check Baby Keem out if he's in your city or state. But, uh, sure. all right, bro. So let's get to then the Megan. Uh, let's circle back with that. The Megan interview with Gail King over the weekend, or maybe, like, on Friday, yeah. um, where she gave a pretty detailed breakdown of the whole Tory Lane situation, which right. is wild, just off the bat, because I feel like didn't like the the court say like both of you stop talking about this right. outside of the courtroom. Yeah, I, that's what I thought. And like, regardless of whether people think she's lying or not, I'm like, why the fuck is this an interview before anything is taking place? Before the verdict, right? Like after, sure. Like if maybe yeah. like it came out that she was lying, but she wants to still still, still tell her story. I get that. Yeah. But before. Right, like you're you're literally trying to influence the the jurors. Like mm-hmm. I think that's what the courts are saying. Like you both, you need to stop trying to influence the people who are going to decide your verdict. Right, and I get from her standpoint why she would want to speak because she she's like the victim in the situation apparently. Um, but yeah, I just found it kind of weird um, when I heard her speak up about it. Like, and the fact that she's repeated like you know the same rhetoric over and over makes me so question. for people who didn't listen or hear no. or, or see it what were the what was the same rhetoric the same rhetoric from the sense of like tori shot me i was shot um i didn't do anything wrong to like provoke this situation like hearing that over and over it's it's hard to uh believe that she would be completely lying given that if there's discrepancies then i feel like it would fuck her over but at the same time i find it hard to believe that uh she's telling the full truth from this interview because there was an instance where gail king asked if she had a sexual relationship with Tori. She, like, yeah, yeah. she paused and like kind of said no, like chuckled and then said no and i'm just like that was the one instance where i'm like i really don't believe this aspect of the interview the rest i'm like i'll leave it to the courts but that one bit made me question the validity of everything else and it was more so because like i saw that clip specifically and it was more so because like i don't get how you pause and like 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 when when someone asks are you involved with someone yeah like that that implies sexually right so like when she was like oh you mean sexually we're like yeah like what else do you think this is right i mean the only like possible explanation in my head could be like oh maybe she made out with him once or like like she wanted to bang him but it never got there or something that was like the only thing i could think of where it's like well well, it technically wasn't sexually because i only did xyz but in any case it looked like there was a clear uh sexual relationship or attraction going on between them that like she just something wanted to not admit yeah i agree with that yeah, yeah i agree with that but bro man like again i think and it's not trying to be recency bias like bro but there is a dude she's massive and again this is not a physical joke like she is a massive brand right now mm-hmm. so like again i it's wild because i don't i again for us like the commoner fan watching all this unfold like we're like yo is she crazy why would she do this but bro you know there's a pr machine behind her they know what they're doing you know Mm -hmm. i mean there's no way she does an interview with gail king 
and it's not a well planned out, you know, hey, you're going to say this and you're not going to say, you know what I mean? So like, there has to be something behind the scenes, obviously we don't know about, but man, like, I don't know, man, I, I, I don't see her losing. And I don't know what losing means, but I don't see her either, even if she like loses the case, I don't think we're going to ever find out enough that she now loses the level of fame that she has possessed over the last two years. Because in my, like, dude, I think literally three months ago, we are like, bro, she's lying, cancel this woman, it's a wrap. And dude, I, after being exposed to what she is as a brand in person, even though I thought the performance was fucking mediocre at best, dude, she has so many fans, bro, that I don't see her ever being like canceled, even if it's found out that she lied about all this. Mm -hmm. I think she's like almost like too big to fail now. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. After this whole like Johnny Depp situation, which I don't want to uh, ramble about, but like I was surprised at first when you said the turnout was as big or maybe not so surprised, but I know from my subjective viewpoint, I feel like this case for her has like overshadowed everything musically, like to the point where even if I see a music video or whatever, like my mind just goes to like oh, Tori. case, like shot Tori, blah, blah, yeah. blah. Like it's never about the song. Whereas Tori's just like completely ignored it. Basically, it seems like, and it's just making music left and right. Like vaguely talks about stuff here and there, but like, Dude, I only think like about the music with him. Making music that no one's really checking for. Yeah. Like, like no, no one, like only the not a, fans, This is not a shot at him, but like, no, no pun intended. But like, I don't think there's ever been a moment since since that initial album dropped that we were all like curious as mm-hmm. fuck. Yeah. I don't think there's been a moment since that either of you and I have been like, bro, did you hear that new Tory Lanez song? Yeah. We're just like, bro, like, we didn't really, we liked you before, but we didn't really like you like that fair. You know what I mean? Like, if I'm being honest, like, I like Tory Lanez, bro. Like, I, like the, the album I enjoy the most is uh, Memories Don't Die, um, where he has a, a few fucking bangers on it. But for the most part, bro, I was like, it was kind of corny. Like, you're always fucking copying people's style, blah, 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 and making your own allegedly, but not really. But, like, it's pretty wild how, like, people are, are like, yo, we're not going to let him go down for some shit that just doesn't make sense, which yeah. I appreciate, bro. Because for the most part, you would think, like, yo, he'd be done. And, like, that just hasn't happened yet, which I'm yeah. happy about because I don't think anyone... I get, I get, I just don't think a millionaire is going to shoot someone in the leg or whatever. Oh. And like, I just, I cannot see that. I mean, according to my Spotify, I'm like one of his biggest fans. To he's the, he's the top three percent, right? Like, yeah, <laughs> some shit like that. I mean, granted, it's not like projects. It's, it's probably you know the handful of songs that yeah, a yeah, bunch yeah. of other people listen to. Um, I do agree, like the the '80s like influence album and all that recent stuff. Like, I personally didn't care to replay much of any of that or check for it um i think i've been trying to avoid being like the rest of the public and you know basically crucify him before like all of the evidence is out just because it seems weird to pick either side like definitively and be like hey this person's an absolute liar Mm -hmm. without having the evidence because we really don't know um but i do think what probably had happened allegedly was that they were all drunk and i guarantee like the gunshots were accidental and she for whatever reason thought it was tory or was more upset at him versus the friend mm. and kind of just like accused them of being responsible for it but yeah, i and really they interviewed it, like did she ever ask them like hey was alcohol involved I don't think so. And that I know academics brought that up and I'm, I agree. I'm like, why was that not a question? That was even a question regarding my situation that we won't get into, but uh, the work related one, that was a question that was asked. And I feel like in any situation where, uh, you know, there's like violence. Or People act out of, if someone's an act out of character, you wouldn't right. know why. You know what I mean? Like, right. But I mean, she did claim that she didn't put hands on anyone. She didn't yell at anyone, which I don't believe just because uh i feel like if the argument was that severe like you had to have contributed somehow like unless you or you're accidentally shot and you're just blaming uh you're saying this person intentionally shot you which i still don't really yeah. believe yeah 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 
Yeah, because it's weird. Like in the clips I saw, because I, I I didn't see the full interview. Um, in the clips I saw, it, it was kind of to your earlier point. She's really trying to make it clear that like I had nothing to do with this. I'm a victim. It's like, bro, like something had to go down. Like, even if you, even if you say, yo, I slapped this guy, and he shoots you, you're still the victim. You know what I mean? Like right. it's, but you can say, hey, like I did, like to the the stance she's taken of like I did nothing wrong here. Like mm -hmm. even that is like, bro, come on, man. Like yeah. you didn't do anything. Like you didn't do anything. You didn't drink with them. You didn't like say a funny comment again. You're still not to blame, but it gives us better fucking context as to what happened because the other side is that you're just saying this guy took a gun and shot you in the foot for no fucking reason. Like mm -hmm. that doesn't make sense. Right. And the only reason why I brought up the Johnny Depp trial, and I don't know if you follow that at all, but oh, apparently dude, I've been following. Yo, you know what's wild is that I've seen like more news about it in my random moments on TikTok. Like there was yeah. a TikTok live in the courtroom. Mm -hmm. And I was like, yo, why is this here? You yeah, I, mean? I can't escape this shit. I, I never cared. I didn't even know, barely knew who Amber Heard was. But now I'm just like forced to follow the trial. So I brought dude, it apparently up. Apparently she's Elon Musk's ex-girlfriend. Oh, wow. Damn, yeah, she's I just, just learned that, that she's not fucking swimming in billions, probably. Yeah, dude. Well, I guess he never wiped her, so. Yeah, yeah. But I, I brought it up because I feel like now people have basically canceled her because they realize she's a nutcase. I don't think Megan is going to be painted in that way, but I feel like if the court came out and literally was like, you know, Megan, who's proven, or like this woman or something was proven to be the one that shot Meg because Meg did X, Y, Z, I feel like she'll still lose uh, at least respect within like the hip hop community. I don't know if, you know, the casual pop listeners or whatever will give a flying fuck, but I think certain artists may not want to work with her at all. Like, yeah, within that I would community. just say it's going to be a little bit different though, bro. I see the comparison for sure, but like this Amber Heard chick is barely famous. So mm -hmm. I think like the, the res it's easier for us to cancel her. Cause we're like, forget her. Yeah, yeah, who yeah. the fuck are you? Like, bro, we didn't watch your movies before. Like, and now yeah. you just your Johnny Depp's crazy ex-wife. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. So I think it's a little bit easier. Whereas like Megan was famous before and then after just fucking became this powerhouse that no one can avoid, even when you try to avoid it, you know? So right. I think it will be harder to cancel her, bro. Because I just mm -hmm. think like, if you're on her side, nothing that the court says is going to change your opinion because yeah. you believe the woman who you're literally obsessed about. Yeah, that is, that is very true. Um, in general, I'm more and more curious as time goes by to see how this pans out because it seems like nobody's admitting to shit. Everyone's like, I had nothing to do with anything. Yeah. It's not like one person's like, well, yeah, like this kind of went down, but it was an accident. Like everyone's just like, Nope, like nothing's true. Yeah, it, it was. Yeah, yeah, dude, facts. But I, as more like th that that phrase, as more and more time goes by, bro, why has so much time gone by? Like, why don't we have a resolution right. already, bro? Yeah, it's almost two years. Like, yeah. how is that even fucking possible? Yeah, I, I have no idea. I'm not sure how the system works in that sense, but because I would hope, God forbid, you and I ever get shot. The resolution was been like a couple months. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, like, yo, he did it. Yeah. Let's figure out and prove that as right. opposed to like, he did it and let's give it, you know, three or four years and we'll figure out. I'm like, yeah. what? Like, I mean, maybe that's why. I, I don't know. Maybe like the evidence is so sketchy that like they just need time. But it, it, yeah, it's still crazy to me. And I, I think what it boils down to is like no one really wants to speak up or maybe fess up to it. Because I feel like it was an accident, but it's like, if it's an accident, do you? There's admit still to it? someone to go like, to be blamed though. Yeah, yeah. And like I get, I think she, like I don't know, like it's the boy cry wolf, but some kind of like, she's in too deep. Like mm -hmm. she can never circle around and say, "You go, guys, never mind." Like it was like she can't now. Like she's all in. Like yo, he shot me. That's what it is. Because yeah. if she changes her story now, bro, then she will lose credibility with her fans. And I think her mm -hmm. fans, which are obviously bigger than Tori's fans, um, and just numbers, are still pushing the narrative that she's the victim. Whereas I think if she came out and said, you know what, guys, I was drunk, 
then she's just going to start losing people. And I, I think that, I think Rock Nation knows like that's not the route she can go down. Yeah. 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 This is a, a wild ass situation, but hopefully the truth comes out and we can move on past this because I feel like it's also in a weird way divided a lot of people in this, uh, like the fans and the listeners and stuff. Like, I know someone personally who like, actually got mad when this situation first went down and he released that like Daystar album or whatever. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We like shared it in the music chat and like she like flipped out. But like hip hop fans were like like hip hop artists were mad about it bro. Like Rick Mm -hmm. Ross was mad at fucking Tory Lanez. Yeah yeah. He's like bro you have a song about drugging women and fucking them. What are you Mm -hmm. talking about? Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah and that that was was what was weird too is like this uh what do you call it? like virtual virtue signaling and like oh, I'm this self righteous person with morals yet you have a song yeah talking about you know doing this to to be women and all kinds of stuff and I'm like they just wanna I don't know come across like something they're not I guess yeah yeah no but I feel you with that like it's it, it definitely it's like almost like talking politics mm-hmm. like there's a extreme left and extreme right to this topic as well like, I like even like I think my like my my girl's sister is like a massive Megan fan. Mm-hmm. So like the idea of not of not being a Megan fan or being a Tory fan is like are you crazy? Right. How can you do that? It's right. just like Yeah, it not? is very political. Even yeah. like the Will Smith shit, like all of a sudden this stupid, like inappropriate slap has become like a you know, a protect black women movement versus like, you know, protect like black boys from becoming violent. I'm like, where is all of this coming from? Like, can't someone make a stupid mistake that kind of has nothing to do with, you know, any of that? With anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. dude. Like, that's that's funny. Dude, yeah, you can't just make a mistake anymore. Like, there has to be a deeper meaning either what's hurting you or who you're hurting. And it's like, mm-hmm. bro, I can also have a fucking lapse in judgment and we can move on with the fucking day. You know what I mean? Like, right. what, are we, yeah. what are we talking about here? So, right. yeah, yeah, dude. I, I feel that. I feel that a lot, actually. So... All right, bro. But good take. I really like that. Uh, that. So we're definitely gonna put that up as a as a clip for sure. Um, after yeah. this. So, all right. So I want to jump into the Pusha T album review. Um, it's almost dry. You heard it before me. My first go through was on the flight to Cali, which I was fucking falling asleep on, so I couldn't give it a proper listen. I did yesterday and today. Before I give my feedback, I want to hear your Pusha T review. Yeah. Um, I will admit I was a little drunk when I first listened to it. So That's even better. I think that kind of influenced how hype I got to it. First and foremost, I think the the first song on the album, it's probably my favorite. I think it was a great way to was start it, it Brambleton? off. Brambleton? Yeah, Brambleton. Um, I'm a sucker for Pharrell beats or the mm-hmm. Neptunes beats. A lot of beats on this one. Yeah. So, and even the Kanye beats. Um, I think it was very standard push a t um i don't think he did anything necessarily outside of the box with this one i think it was just kind of refreshing to get um you know top-notch lyricism over like i said refreshing beats um i don't know if if any of his music is it's necessarily like super replayable for me but i think overall like the the raw hip-hop magic that people want out of uh, today's artist was there and can't really be matched by a lot of other artists in the game. But at the same time, I, I don't think he really pushed the envelope too far with this one. Um, yeah. But I, I still think it was a great body of work um, compared to a lot of the the stuff we've been getting. Um, and yeah, I mean, he's always been one of my favorite lyricists. It's just, again, not something that can fit a lot of different vibes. Like, I feel like you kind of got to be in the mood to really want to listen to this kind of stuff yeah yeah i agree with that dude um but i will say again we've been a podcast to be very accountable so i think like when he dropped diet coke and we even criticized him like bro really like when are you finally going to switch it up uh, i think this body of work proves like you don't really need to switch it up if you're really talented at that one specific thing right i think like mm-hmm. in the years of virgil and kanye we give people like all these credits even tyler for being like a jack of all trades right yeah. um but I think we also have to give credit to people for being exceptional at like, I think they say like a Japanese culture, like, you know, one guy is like exceptional at just, you know, learning a skill and only doing that until it's perfect. 
bro, Pusha T is the perfect drug dealing rapper. Like it's mm-hmm. just a fact. And if you ever had a doubt about it, this album does that for you in fucking waves, bro. Yeah, yeah. Um, I thoroughly enjoyed it, man, on full listen. Uh, this probably was the first Pusha T album that like a song was so good, I had to like start over again. Yeah, yeah. Like, and that that's never happened to me at all with a Pusha T album. Even like mm-hmm. when he dissed Drake and I wanted to be like, yo, what the fuck is it by my boy? Like I never played <laughs> it back, you know? Like, but yeah, for yeah. this one, I was like, yo, play that shit back, dog. Like mm-hmm. I want to, I want to get motivated from the beginning for this track. So like, yeah. That was pretty impressive, bro. The production was great. It actually had me thinking about, like, uh, you know, just how much we appreciate the evolution of Nas. But, like, damn, like, this is what we've been begging for of Nas, like, 15 years ago. Like, bro, if you just had, like, the best beats all the time, Mm -hmm. look at what level you would probably be at, right? And, like, this is just, like, reminding me, like, bro, like, we can say all we want about Pusha T. Like, all you do is talk about, like, drugs. But, fam... He does it over the best production ever. You know what I mean? So yeah. like, it's gonna sound great regardless. Right. You know what I mean? And he's also yeah. super fucking talented at talking about it. So it's just like, bro, like, it's always gonna be a fucking perfect, you know, body of work. To be honest. Yeah, yeah, and I was, yeah, I was thinking about the Diet Coke release, and I th- think I was less excited about it just because uh, there wasn't like an entire body of work to go off of. So mm-hmm. like that one new release it's like all right like this is but one small piece like what is there what else is there for me but i feel like he does what he does in a very clever way i think one line that got me that made me replay it was when he uh he said like selling the purest like we selling white privilege or something yeah like yeah, that. yeah yeah yeah, that yeah was good. like like a lot of bars that a lot of these so-called like new age drug dealers who don't probably don't really sell anything uh He's just very clever with it and speaks on it as if it's, I don't know, it just feels like very uh, cinematic in a way. Yeah, dude, it's elevated drug music. Like, it's Mm -hmm. elevated, bro. Like, it's not corner boy shit. It's like, bro, like, let me, if I'm going to talk about, like, shipping in keys from overseas, like, I have to say this shit in a believable, like, cinematic approach. It can't just be like, yeah, I'm in the corner, you know, flipping you know bro no you're not so like if you're gonna tell me this at least make it a movie you know what i mean and i think right. like this album is a movie um uh, yeah that line stood out bro uh i think he has like another line I, I'm, a, I'm a butcher but it is what it is like um like i think he's talking about people looking at him and his boys with like envy and it's like you know you look at me and think like what you could have been like you could have been and i was like oh my like this is like you know the wordplay is phenomenal and, like, I would never even go to him for, like, caption-worthy quotes. Mm-hmm. Bro, he has a bunch on this fucking body of work, yeah. right? So, to that point, if that's, like, what Drake is renowned for, we got to give it a push-up for also doing the same thing. Because, like, even if you never thought about selling an ounce of coke in your life, there's a bunch of fucking lines you can use from this fucking album and make your fucking Instagram fire. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? So, like, Yeah, no, it was, it was definitely inspirational, I think, uh, um, I don't know, having critiqued him doing the same shit over and over, there's something that felt uh, motivational from the standpoint of mm-hmm. just hustling regardless. Like, you could use it as a, a metaphor in a way, like, whether you, you have a podcast or a nine-to-five or some other yeah. investments, like, you just felt like there was a mindset of, I got to get it by any means and, and make it happen. Um, and he, his voice, like, just how he speaks it in a very like assertive like spitting i'm um, giving game kind yeah. of way Your confidence yeah, yeah, yeah dude. Confidence like, if you're confident about if you're confident sorry about anything you do mm. it's almost hard to like knock you for it like even if i don't agree with what you're doing if yeah. you're so fucking confident in what you do like bro kudos to you you know what i mean 100 uh, percent uh the, the song that i besides brambleton that was a replayable for me was ju- definitely uh just so you remember Mm, um, fire, dude. Yeah, that song, that beat, and everything just that shit it d- definitely belongs in a movie or TV show or something, dude. But I also love that, like, to your point, like about Diet Coke when it came out as one song, you're like, all right, bro, like, I get it. But in the middle, literally, of the entire album to have that break, mm-hmm. like, yo, it is, dude, it makes the second half of the album go hard. Which right. is why I love fucking rock and roll with Kanye and um, 
Dreaming oh, of the rock past. and roll, yeah, that's fire. Dreaming of the that that hook on Dreaming of the Past with Kanye is dude flawless, dude. Mm-hmm. So like, yeah, man, good for him, bro. Because I've never, ever, 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 bro, been like, yo, this is a fire album when it comes to pushing. It's always been like, yo, you're fucking solid. You're probably the best lyricist on good on good music, but like, whatever, bro. Like, you're just famous because you're Kanye's best friend, and you're like, he made you in charge of like shit for Adidas, like. And like Pharrell makes your beats. Like, why wouldn't you be famous? But like mm-hmm. on this body of work, I was like, oh, I, I get it, bro. Like, like you said, you, but what I what I with him, whereas like with I think Jay-Z could be talking about selling drugs, but he'll use clever metaphors to make it like like about something else, right? Mm-hmm. Like he can say something about like about something else, but like you know he's talking about drugs. Yeah. Like with him, like to your point about like hustle music, like you have to find the metaphors and the analogies on your own. Mm -hmm. Like, he's going to talk about drugs, but then you have to figure out a way to make it about whatever it is you're pursuing and being the best at that, right? Because he's like, I'm going to tell you how I'm the best at this drug thing, and I hope it motivates you to go be the best at whatever it is the fuck you're you're trying to be the best at. Whereas, like, you know, other rappers just, like, talk about other things, so you can, it's an easier analogy for you to find. Right, right. And Pusha T also, I think he just carries himself in a a different way like he, he doesn't come across it like as like some hoodlum who's just like straight up ignorant like he oh no clearly so smart, has dude. uh yeah he's super intelligent clearly knows what he's doing and has a a head on his shoulders that most of these guys don't have so i think that's why people kind of gravitate mm-hmm. towards his music even if you could consider it like mindless cold crap or whatever he uh he he definitely has a underlying message with everything and i think that's why old heads really like him because it's not just like oh yeah i was on the block like every day selling crack like it's yeah no dude, i agree and, it, I, and i think that there's some beauty and just his confidence bro like dude most rappers in 2018 aren't going up against drake and like yo we'll keep going oh, back yeah. to back if you want to bro you know mm-hmm. what i mean like there's a like a scariness about that. Like, yo, this yeah. motherfucker is wanting to just fucking have his career ended and he does oh, not yeah. care. No, he's so like, like a there's something almost. about that that I think keeps people intrigued. Like, yo, this motherfucker's crazy. Like, why would yeah. you do this? You know, like No, I think that I forget which song it was, but there's I think I'm pretty sure he says the word Joker and it has this like cackle in the back that just sounds very villainous. And mm-hmm. I really do feel like it's like some Batman versus Joker shit. And people love the Joker because once you've seen Batman not be challenged like for so long, you're like, somebody's got to be strong enough to whoop his ass. Like, yeah. he can't just keep, you know, being the hero like forever. Right. And that's why, as much as I love Drake, hearing the diss still like excited me because I'm like, oh, there's a challenger now. Like, yeah, he's it's not a challenger, bro. He's going to be the legend, uh, this uh, invincible legend for the rest of his career. Yeah, dude. Because especially like, remember, he was only really challenged by what Meek tweeted or said about him like mm-hmm. meek never gave us the song right so it's like bro all we like literally this guy's like record is undefeated and like being challenged so mm-hmm. like the fact that he has like this blemish finally and it was this guy who had everything to lose you would think but thought he did it like that's just the beauty of him bro like the madness so no nah, man shout out to push t bro phenomenal body of work um a lot of replayable songs that I never thought I would ever be at a point that I'm doing that with him. So, dude, if you're, if you're dropping this body of work at the age of, like, 43, 44, yeah, that's all you can really ask for from a rapper, to be honest. Mm-hmm. And I also feel like the fact that Jay-Z's damn near, like, always on one of his songs proves that, because Jay-Z doesn't give out features like that, so it proves that he respects him highly, and I think that's why a lot of other people respect him, too, because it's, like, impossible to get a Jay-Z feature. Yo, I think it's fun. I was listening to an interview with uh, on Two Chains, and he's like, "Bro, I've spoken to Jay Z. I've told Jay Z it's my dream to have a feature, and I've yet to get a fucking feature." Bro. Like, <laughs> right? And he's, he's like, "Bro, I have him on my phone. We're friends, and he won't give me a fucking verse." <laughs> yeah, that's wild. I don't know if like Jay Z's just like, oh, if if you're making a hustler music, like it's just easy for me to blend in and spit some shit I've already thought. Or or what? Because I'm sure Two Chains, whatever he's trying to do, would would be a different kind of vibe than a yeah. Push but I, feel like, I mean, yeah, I think he can make it work. But it's just yeah, to your point, like yeah, like not everyone's getting a Jay Z feature. I would say this, and people can check my resume. Massive Jay Z head. Everyone knows this, dude. 
that verse was a throwaway verse to me though. Like I didn't, yeah, that didn't do anything for me. Like I think it was just cool to have Jay Z on the album, but bro, that verse about if Biggie was alive and I put this out into the universe, I'm like, bro, yeah, stop with your TED Talk shit. And like, bro, like, this <laughs> isn't, this isn't that, bro. Yeah, the verse didn't blow me away either. Um, but it's clear. I think what's clear to me is he seems to gravitate towards these kinds of songs because he's always on like a Rick Ross song he's on, or a Young Jeezy song. Like basically all the Coke, totally agree, rap, Coke rap industry, he's always like involved in some way. Yeah, and I think with, and he's always on a Drake, if Drake asks him for a feature, Drake's mm -hmm. getting one because at the end of the day, I think he wants to be competitive with Drake on Drake's own shit. Yeah. So I think that's it's like a why, little challenge too. Right, exactly. Like, oh, who had the better verse? Whereas, like, if yeah, no disrespect to fucking two chains, and I love two chains, um, it's like, how do I benefit from this? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. bro, this is doing nothing for me. Like, so if you want me to right. come out of retirement to give you 16 bars for what? Like, I think he's like, bro, I'm gonna kill you on your own track. I don't want to do that to you. You know what I mean? <laughs> he's sparing him. I'm just, yeah, sparing him the embarrassment. Like, bro, you just paid. Fifty thousand dollars for this feature to get fucking murdered on. Like, what's the point? So, um, <laughs> well, maybe that's yeah, his shout out, list. Shout out to um, to Pusha T. Almost dry, phenomenal. It's almost dry. Phenomenal body of work. Um, before we get into heat of the week, uh, I know you wanted to talk about. I do. I haven't peeped. I didn't even know it dropped. I thought it was gonna drop. I didn't see it on my Apple Music playlist. Uh, I guess Future has a single that dropped with uh, with Travis, right? Yeah. Uh, and we can actually get into Heat of the Week because that's that's my personal Heat of the oh, Week. Oh, shit. Okay. Beautiful. Um, yeah, Future dropped a song with Travis, I believe. That's all going to be on his album that drops this coming Friday, April mm -hmm. 29th. Yep. And honestly, when I first heard it, I I was more in tune with what Pusha T's album was bringing, so I didn't really give it a thorough listen. But last night, I saw the music video, and I would actually watch the music video instead of just listen to the song. Um, okay, nice. I, right. I, absolute banger. I actually think I prefer Future's part over Travis's, but yeah, like they couldn't have gone wrong with this one. It, they stick to the formula. Again, nothing like a Pusha T that has like a ton of meaning behind it. It's just like trap shit. But the production's amazing by Southside. The visuals are crazy. The girl in the video is absolutely nuts. And it just has like a dark trap vibe that. Travis and Future both do very well. I feel like this is kind of a slow introduction for Travis okay. to gauge like if people are still fucking with him or not based on the comments people are. Uh, okay. But yeah, uh, amazing song and uh, added to the playlist for sure. What's the name of the song? Uh, oh, I believe it's Hold That Heat. Hold that mistaken. heat. Oh, and Southside made the beat. Yeah, hold that, hold that heat. Yeah, Southside made the beat. Okay. There's Future and Travis on it. Then you know producers, like, that's the giveaway when, like, they get a feature because they like, yo, this song is fire. I better get more yeah. credit than you. You know what I mean? Right. <laughs> they had this motherfucker in the music video for, like, half of it. He didn't say a single word. I'm like, yeah, he's definitely like, yo, I'm like at least 50% of the reason yeah. why this song is going to do yeah, well. So yeah, you better yeah. put So I'm getting up. a feature. I'm not just a producer. Bro, this yeah. is my song. You know what I mean? Because like, <laughs> yeah. like, you know, like when Hip Boy used to do that and like uh, Murder um, murder Beats, like, bro, like you're like, why are you getting... Oh, like, you know, did a lot of Metro Boomin. Yeah, It'd yeah. be like, bro, like, you know, it always like a, you know, Nav and Metro Boomin and like, and it's like, bro, why is he... It's like, bro, like those beats are fire. Like mm -hmm. I can give those beats to anyone. What? Like... You're going to give me credit, motherfucker, you know? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I thought uh, that was funny, too. All right. I'll peep it, though, because, yeah, I, I, I've heard good things. I just didn't get it. But you say content. Well, it's weird because, like, never did I, before Travis song came out, I was like, yo, what, what was he talking about? Yeah. But I feel like now with the atmosphere, it's like, what? So, like, content-wise, like, what is he talking about? Uh, Nothing, really. <laughs> <laughs> if I'm being honest, like, he's not addressing anything that happened. He's not really saying too much he's just like yo i'm out in cabo with this spanish chick i'm over here got like blah 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 and zanny's like it's not anything that he hasn't already said i think and nor do most people expect anything really yeah. i think it's just a vibe um it's uh, kind of like what we were saying about push up they're sticking to the formula it's what we want we don't we're not trying to get anything brand new and we haven't really heard 
or gotten much from Future or him recently. At least anything that's been like super memorable. Oh, so I, yeah, I was memorable. Just I, you know, funny enough, I was actually listening to Future's album, the last one that came out um, in 2020, the one Life is Life is Good was on. Like, uh-huh. yeah, I was actually bumping that on the flight back. But no, I feel that, dude. Yeah, it's just funny though, man, because yeah, they're sticking to a formula, but it's also like Pusha T's not coming off, you know, 12 bodies on his head because yeah, of yeah. a festival. Like, it's just different, bro. Like, right. I think the best thing that could happen for Travis is that all these festivals just keep going on throughout the summer and like, and people, you know, not obviously, not that he's wishing for anyone else to get hurt, but yeah. just that like, yo, mistakes can happen. And it's mm-hmm. just like, bro, like this was a one-off. Like, I right. shouldn't be crucified because at my festival, this one terrible thing fucking happened. Yeah. Yeah, I think, uh, I mean, from a PR standpoint, the best he can do is release a bunch of bangers and if it's what the fans want i don't i see that drowning out anything these like conspiracy theorists or whoever else can possibly say or do because he's he's already done the like cookie cutter pr shit like oh, i'm mm-hmm. donating to this charity and doing this and that like there's really nothing he can do besides that at this point yeah dude i i dude i i agree i i i 100 agree dude it was dope i saw his billboards on the way to coachella which oh, was did? like just funny to see. Yeah, yeah. I saw the billboards. Um, you're going the wrong way, dude. But uh-huh. the dope thing about those billboards, they actually like give you insight onto music that's coming out that you probably wouldn't know about. So Calvin Harris is dropping a follow up to his Funk Way Volume One, like uh-huh. this summer. So oh, wow. bro, like that was a, dude. That body of work was wild when that mm-hmm. shit came out, like in 20. That's the one with like Future and Quavo and everybody, Kalani. Yeah, uh, Trav- uh, not Travis. I think, yeah, Travis, uh, Frank Ocean. Is yeah, on Travis, the- yeah. Yeah, yeah, dude. Like, that's the one that's like, it's literally like an R&B hip-hop album over phenomenal house production. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I'm excited for that, bro. Because, like, yeah, he had, like, three or four massive billboards on the way to Coachella. I was like, oh, shit, yeah. he's being by fire. So, yeah, um, yeah, because that, that, that's a, that's music where, like, bro, any mood you're in, you're uh, going to be in a better say that. mood after. Uh-huh. Right, that and I feel like that, the music from that album could be played in like any environment, like any with environment. people that like hip hop, like pop, like if you just want to put on some regular shit that everyone can vibe out to, like that's the go to. Hundred percent, bro. And like, and I also think like timeless. Like he could drop that album that came out like four years ago, ten years from now, or in the nineties, and it'd be like, wow, this is the best shit out right now. So yeah, yeah. Uh, so shout out to Calvin Howard. All right, cool. So you're here the week, Travis and Future and Southside. We'll get on the playlist. So real quick, I well, not real quick. I wanted like two minutes for this one. So my heat of the week is an artist that I stumbled upon at Coachella. So literally, bro, we had like an hour before Denzel Curry. Um, we just finished Doja Cat and we were just like, oh, let's just find, let's just walk around. And then dude, we were walking by the Gobi stage, the one with the chandelier. And we heard lit, dude, the voice of an angel. You know, I'm like, I'm not <laughs> even exaggerating, bro. Like her and I both looked at her like, yo, Whoever is singing is fucking killing it. And there's a decent thought, like group watching him. We need to go see who the fuck this is. And the artist goes by the name of Ali, A-L-I, um, Gatti, G-A-T-I-E. Bro, phenomenal voice, bro. Like, dude, so, so fucking good. And what's hysterical, dude, when I saw him, I'm like, this nigga looks like Russ. When I hear him, uh-huh. He sounds like Russ. And then I went to his Instagram page and Russ like supports him and follows him. So I know when these dudes meet in public, it's like the Spider-Man meme where they're like, just pointing. <laughs> it's like, bro, they're like the same fucking person. Uh-huh. But bro, the body, like his body work is album. I think it's called um, about a girl or something, whatever. Like his last album came out last year, bro. I went through the whole thing on the flight, dude. Phenomenal. Uh, the song that I'm going to nominate for Heat of the Week, uh, his, sorry, his album is called The Idea of Her. Um, the, the song I'm going to nominate for Heat of the Week is What If I Told You That I Love You? Bro, the way he sings in like a song, rappy, main, it's mainly singing. I was like 85%, but like it's in a very Russ, like rapping kind of way. Bro, it's mm-hmm. just flawless, dude. And like, it was epic. Like, dude, I'm telling you like, we got there and we stayed for another 40 minutes because we were wow. just like, bro, like we're finishing this fucking set. So like, that's again, the beauty of Coachella. You can stumble upon artists like, oh, wow, I really fuck with this kind of music. So 
yeah, bro, highly recommend everyone go peep him. Um, yeah, dude, fuck, I, you know, if we can get him on the pod one day, he's actually fucking already massive. I did not expect that because, yeah, he's like, this is my first ever festival show. I'm like, oh, this nigga don't know. Yeah. Like, yo, he, yeah, he's just nobody. And I'm like, oh, this guy is somebody, <laughs> bro. Like, he actually has a song with Ty Dolla Sign and Marshmello. Oh, and yeah, like, I saw that uh, on his Spotify. I'm like, bro, this dude is huge already. But whatever, bro. Again, mm. I, I think it would be a great story if we had him on the pod one day. So, again, shout out to him. Phenomenal set. Um, and, yeah, dude, the, the body of work is actually pretty pretty good for someone starting out. And, uh, again, I think if you, again, if, if, you, if you just like R&B a little bit, there's no way you don't fuck with him. Nice. Yeah, I'll definitely have to check him out. Um, I, I did see his Instagram page, and I was like, oh, shit. Like, he does have a million whatever plus Yo, 1.6, dog. I did not I had yeah, never when heard I, of him. When I got to that page, I was like, oh, this is surprising. <laughs> 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 yeah. Okay, only, only because, again, I never, not that we're, like, the end-all, be-all of hip-hop, but, like, for someone to have 1.6 million and be relatively unknown, like, that's pretty crazy, right? Mm-hmm. And, again, okay, what is the power of social media? You can grow a following and not be on the radio, not be on YouTube like that. So, yeah. dude, kudos to him, bro, which is why another reason I would love to get Like, I was actually more intrigued to have him on the pod one day because I was like, yo, like, this is amazing. Like, yo, like, you're, like, properly huge, but not huge. Like, this is, like, it has to be motivating because, dude, if you can get to this level without a hit, imagine if you do. Like, bro, you're, mm-hmm. you're going to fucking just skyrocket, which is good. Just shout out yeah. to him. No, oh, shout out to him, 100%. Yes, sir. Uh, dude, phenomenal episode, bro. Love catching up as always. Dude, probably our lo- longest episode in a minute. So that's, that's I love it, dude. So uh, let the people know where they can find it, listen to us, see us, buy the merch, all that. Yes, sir. Check us out at audio-theory.com. We have the merch on there. We're on all platforms. New episode every week, as well as the, uh, the Spotify and Apple Music playlist. So definitely check that out. Um, we have a couple interviews in the works, uh, I believe, next month. Will be our next one uh that's a big one with former guest uh johan lennox part two so super excited for that once we have a chance to listen to his, his new album but if you're an artist and listening definitely uh submit your music to us and we'll review it and potentially get you on as well but otherwise please like share subscribe uh do everything you can to support the podcast absolutely and a shout out to fear remember shout go to their to website fear. audio dash theory at the link below uh to get some benefits 100%. Awesome, my dude. Great catching up. Love you, man. Likewise. Peace. Love it too. Peace. Peace.